I absolutely love Midnight Resistance, practically on every single system to where it was ported. My favorite conversion is probably the one for the Sega Mega Drive Genesis made by Opera House for Data Hits themselves, but sadly, never had a commercial release specific for the European Mega Drive model, despite magazines like the British Computer and Video Games and the French Joystick reviewing the Japanese version on their respective pages, a version commercialized by the Data Hist Corporation, also known as Deco, and only available in the old continent through import. Nowadays I can play the arcade original just by using an unofficial non-rotary joystick ROM on my homemade MAME cabinet, but back then I could only enjoy it on the ZX Spectrum and on the Amiga. And it was awesome to see the arcade cabinet being featured in the second Robocop movie. Ocean Software grabbed the license for European home computers and special effects was the team responsible for this conversion of such a highly popular coin-op game, at least here in Portugal. And I can't get this amazing soundtrack out of my mind, it's simply one of my favorites of all time. In this one, a nasty opposing army, under the leadership of a megalomaniac scientific genius known as King Crimson, have kidnapped our whole family. So obviously that our mission is to try and rescue them, going against a huge army of enemies, ranging from foot soldiers through to massive F-14s and huge floating heads that spit maggots. If you're familiar with the arcade original, you know that Midnight Resistance also offers multi-directional scrolling and huge backdrops, ranging from winding mountain trails to massive underground complexes. It's no more nor less a run-and-gun platform shoot-em-up developed by Lady Hist that arrived at the arcades in 1989. It was envisioned by Koji Akibayashi, also responsible for games like Heavy Barrel, released two years prior and heavily inspired by Ikari Warriors. As for Midnight Resistance, it is evidently influenced by the success of Contra by Konami, but can bring its own unique twist, like the use of the rotary joystick. The majority of games within the genre only allowed the player to fire in the direction that the character was facing. Midnight Resistance has no such restriction, as the rotary joystick allows the player to aim independently of their direction of movement, an ability that becomes crucial as enemies begin to attack from all directions very early on. The keybase power-up system also returns from Heavy Barrel, where enemies often drop keys, up to six of which can be carried and spent at the armories visited at the end of each stage. The main guns are staples of the genre, from the utility of the three-way weapon to the devastating power of the flamethrower, but the player can also equip a secondary backpack alternative. This can be used by pushing up and fire together and are capable of doing massive damage and destruction over a wide area. The only problem is that they come with much less ammunition than the primary weapons. Thankfully, losing a life doesn't necessarily mean losing the power-ups. Keys and weapons are dropped upon death and can be collected again, easing the frustration caused by deaths in other games in the genre. While most of the game is reminiscent of an action movie from the 80s, it starts to get weird later on when we have to rescue our family. Our grandfather was forced to build a diabolical super weapon and the other members of the family are locked in those same containers that we usually find weapons in at the end of the levels, so try to get all the keys possible so that you won't get a sad ending. Midnight Resistance is still one of Data East's most visually impressive games of the late 80s, displaying some fine examples of excellent sprite design, especially in what background work is concerned. The cityscape renders in the early stages of the game are absolutely incredible, and also excellent are the set pieces included. The ambush by flying soldiers as we ride stage 3's elevators is so damn tense. The helicopter attack in stage 5 conveys pretty much the same feeling. And the opening short sequence is so badass, riding along this jeep, just watching the enemies being moaned, with that amazing soundtrack blasting through the speakers. 
talking about the game's music, the sound team Azura Hara and Hiroaki Yoshida, responsible for Heavy Barrel, returned and were joined by Tatsuya Kiyushi and Itomi Kamatsu and together delivered another outstanding audio package. The voice work is good, but as said before, the music is clearly the star of the show. It really can make us feel that we're on a desperate and impossible mission, even if the soundtrack is composed of just three main tunes and four boss themes. Midnight Resistance was indeed very popular at the arcades, so a variety of home conversions were ensured, being the majority home computer conversions licensed by Ocean Software and developed by Special Effects. As they had just finished the conversion of Cabal for home micros, Ocean immediately assigned them with the Midnight Resistance project, which presented itself as a pretty challenging conversion. So special effects had to get creative due to the absence of a rotary joystick. As Jim Bagley stated, back then not everyone had one joystick, let alone two. The ZX Spectrum and Amstrad CPC versions allowed the player to hold the fire button to stay on the ground while adjusting aim, whereas the C64 version reverted to firing only in the direction the player was holding and remains as one of the best arcade conversions for Commodore's 8-bit machine, if you exclude the complete stupidity of the guy that created the master tape for Night Moves Pack compilation available for the Commodore 64. The Midnight Resistance game included in that pack was a demo version with only 5 levels and gameplay issues that was mistakenly used instead of the final release. The Amiga and Atari ST versions allowed the player to hold the button to adjust their aim, but without the useful auto-fire that the Spectrum game offered. However, the Amiga conversion had a trump card. It was the only one of the home versions to include a multiplayer mode, so the two-player option remained intact, with the clever use of joystick control allowing the player to fire in eight directions regardless of which way were traveling. The Amiga version really plays like the arcade original, with huge and well-animated sprites along with the previously mentioned smooth 8-way scrolling. And in Ocean Zone versions, the evil mastermind behind the whole plot of the game was renamed from King Crimson to the Commissar. Go figure! The only console version available was, as said, for the Mega Drive Genesis released solely in Japan and in the United States in 1991. The two-player mode is sadly completely gone, but thanks to the console's three-button gamepad, control is a little smoother than on the computer versions. Even so, it still didn't recreate the rotary controls of the original, but provided a button to fix aim, allowing players to move freely while maintaining their intended direction of fire. Also, and strangely, the plot in the North American manual managed to change the majority of the original story. In this particular one, we play as Johnny Ford, a member of the Narcotics Control Agency whose father, Dr. Malcolm Ford, was kidnapped by the drug lord known as the Crimson King. Johnny's father was working on a serum that would prevent the effects of drug addiction, so it was a pretty obvious target for the drug dealers. All these plot changes were made to allow a greater sense of immersion and depth to the whole experience, cause let's face it, the original arcade plot was a bit shallow. The real highlight of this port is again the excellent soundtrack converted by Itoshi Sakimoto. It takes the rather plain but good arcade music and makes it much more powerful. It's sad to witness that since Data East's demise back in 2003, Midnight Resistance only saw an official release on the Evercade through the Data East Collection 1 cartridge, but I would be extremely pleased that it could be also released for all other currently available systems, because I'm sure that all modern gamepads that features two analog sticks as standard could also handle the rotary control scheme. Feel free to share down in the comments section your memories and thoughts on Midnight Resistance. Did you play the arcade original? Have you experienced it on any of the home computer versions by Ocean and Special Effects? 
And what about the Mega Drive Genesis ports? Are you a fan? Tell me everything! So if you've enjoyed this video you know the drill! Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in my next video! Cheers!